I'd like to call uh, the meeting of the Anna Barry Building Committee uh, this evening. And today is um, September September 12th. Uh, and uh, I'd like to take a roll call. Here. 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 Joshua Clark. He's absent. Michael Tarnelli. Here. 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 Okay. Uh, first uh, order of business is the approval of meetings, the meeting of August 8th. Would somebody entertain a motion? So moved. Okay, a second. Second. Okay, the uh, minutes of the August 8th, 2024 meeting is uh, accepted. Yeah, oh, yes, we must take a vote on it. Okay. It, 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 is, who is in favor of the approval of the August 8th meeting? Say aye. 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 Unanimous approval, so the minutes are part of the official uh, meeting that we're holding today. Were there any communications? I am not aware of any. Okay. Okay, I would then like to now go to the third order of business, and this is the status of our designer selection process, process. And I think the representatives from the, uh, the, uh, uh, and the the Colliers, okay, uh, could update on that information, please. Sure, thanks. Um, I handed out a schedule in front of you. That's the one that we've been handing out uh, in our prior meetings, and you can see the flag that's on that that shows the current date. Um, we did have a walkthrough on, I believe it was the uh, 16th of August, and we had a pretty good turnout there. We probably had seven, maybe eight architectural firms that came through for the uh, the tour. And then the, uh, their proposals, their qualification statements were due um, on the September 10th, just uh, Monday or Tuesday this week. And from that, we got uh, four firms that submitted and uh, three, three or four firms that did not submit, that chose not to, not to submit. So the, fir the firms that we have gotten are all good firms. We've uh, worked with them with the MSBA in the past. Um, they're Top notch, they've been in business for quite a while. Um, in no particular order, it's Taisu Kim, um, it's uh, Halo and Benique, uh, it is SAAM, and it is Taisu Kim. Uh, Slam. Yeah, you're right. So Slam is. Uh, 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 Slam, yes, S L A M, uh, collaborative. Uh, they go by Slam. So those uh, have come in now and it's in our hands to do reference checks. We're in the process of doing uh, reference checks that they gave us here, calling those people and, and, and sending out um, surveys to them to find out if there's been any issues or uh, what their past experience is with these firms. And, and the, the also the thing that we're doing for the MSBA is putting together a sub-consultant matrix that they required uh, in the RF, uh, the request for services to list all their sub-consultants for the project. So. Um, they give us that full list. They have to identify which ones are MBE and which ones are WBE, so they make sure that the participation's um, adequate uh, to the state standards. So we we have those. We um, have a draft right now that we finished up of the, that matrix. Uh, we're in the middle of getting those reference checks back, and and we have to deliver those to the MSBA on um, October 9th. Thank you, October 9th, and that's uh, to get. Uh, put on the agenda for the designer selection panel meetings that are coming up. The first one's gonna be on October 22nd with the MSBA. And then and from that, they will take the four firms that um, submitted qualification statements and they will shortlist that down to two, possibly three firms for interviews. And those interviews would be conducted on the, their November 5th designer selection panel meeting. And at that point in time, the, the the design teams would have to come in, do a presentation of um, 
their their experience with MSBA, their experience with elementary schools, their experience with um, Chicopee, if, if there is some, um, so that you get a, a, a good feel for uh, what their capabilities are, rather than just read it out of out of their um, their their submission. Uh, the designer selection panel, I think I talked about that at the last session. That it's made up of 13 sitting members uh, with the MSBA, and they're going to be three delegates uh, from Chicopee that are going to join that. So they have it rounds out to 16 members. They're all going to talk around uh, what their thoughts were uh, of the submissions, and then make a short list from from that for interviews at that November 5th meeting. So pretty straightforward um, how that's going to fall into place. And at the November 5th meeting, right, when those presentations are done, um, you'll hear right then and there which, which firm will be selected. And as we said before, uh, Chicopee, the delegates from Chicopee um, have to come in with a strong opinion. Um, they will be, we're going to ask you to be very vocal about that so that uh, you do get the design team that you think is the best design team. Don't Let's not leave it up to the MSBA to make that decision for you. And um, so we'll know right at the end of that meeting which which uh, team got selected, and we'll get them a notice to proceed shortly thereafter as we're going through their contract for for authorization. That's pretty much the status of where we are today. Well, I just like to chime in and just tell everybody on the board, especially Dr. Ware, the mayor, and Clarissa that Kalo and Beenick, they're top notch. I've done many jobs with them. This job is perfect for them. Uh, I did. Southern Community Center with them. I just did uh, East Hampton School with them. They're in a, over at uh, the job we're doing over in Westfield right now. Um, so, I mean, I would love to see uh, Kalo and Beanick get this because of my past experience with them, they don't roll over to the contractor. I mean, I'm the contractor and they could be a royal pain in the butt, but you're, they're, he does not roll over for a contractor. He is always have our best interest at heart. So I just, that's my two cents. If, if I could just say something that the MSBA doesn't want us to deliberate on any of these until the meeting, um, that we can say good things about any of the firms that, uh, that you'd like to, but we have to make sure that we don't deliberate as, a, as your committee on making a selection until we're seated with the MSBA's designer selection panel. So I did, there's a fine, it's a gray area here, but I just want to caution you on that. Yeah, that's my experience. That's all I'm working on. Which is perfectly fine. Thank you. Well, will the, the MSBA meeting, uh, could we, you know, participate remotely, the, the commission no, members, or is it just it's just the three? Your, just your three delegates that will be at that meeting. I believe it'll be uh, Carissa, it'll be the mayor, and it'll also be uh, Dr. Ward. I'd also like to announce. Oh, where? I'm sorry. Okay, I'd also like to announce that. Uh, uh, Kate Lambert and Dr. Marcus Ware are now participating remotely. That's good because I just said his name wrong. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> Next, uh, representing Chickabee on a panel, our mayor. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, update on the secretary uh, to the commission. Marie, do you have any information? Or Mike? Um, I. I wasn't planning on talking, but I, I will say that I um, drafted just a quick job description. I sent it over to Dr. Ware. His team is now going to kind of review it and see if they think it's appropriate. Um, and I assume from there, Dr. Ware will speak with the mayor and okay. you know try so to move that forward. It's a work so in progress. It's a work in okay. progress. Right now, we're okay. It's when it starts really building up is when we need it. So we do have some time, but it is in the works so that we can be ready. Well, that. Oh, the only other thing I just want to mention real quick, I had a, a conversation with Alan and I was saying, you know, we were talking about who should pay and maybe school, maybe yeah. city, maybe half and half. But I was talking to Alan and I said, we are going to try to have this project pay for the clerk. I mean, as long as we're strict on what they're doing, we may be in good shape, at least for the beginning part of the uh, project to maybe get it paid through. The project. That's the hope. Dr. Ware? Oh, uh, thank you, Ms. Lafam. Um, so yes, I actually do. I, I apologize. I had a meeting on Zoom that ended at the time this one started, and I have one right after this. So uh, I'm sorry I'm on Zoom, but to uh, speak to what Ms. Lafam was talking about, yes, I do have 
the job description. I actually have been going through it with my executive team. Um, some questions have come up, so I wanted to pose it back to the committee or maybe um, we can um, get um, some answers tonight. But um, when we were thinking about this, just some specificity about what this person would need to do, there were some questions around like just the length of project, right? We don't really know, but we know there's going to be ebbs and flows, right? Where as the project picks up, there's going to be things that will need to be paid, et cetera. However, the, 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 to get someone to want to do this out of the central office building or a clerk, I, the questions um, that I didn't foresee, but my committee, my, my executive team helped me see is what's the duration? Like, you know, is it it's going to be at certain meetings? Is it just going to be um, uh, uh, only when things come up? Since this is my first time dealing with this, I actually didn't know how to answer that question. And I know we built schools in the past, and I didn't know if Mr. Flam wanted to speak to that more of what, like what the frequency would look like so I could actually maybe write it in to the job description because in order for it to be appealing to a lot of any clerks or executive assistants over here, um, I, I think that they would wanna know like, hey, this is gonna look like four to eight or 16 hours more a month of your for your job. And that's a big time commitment, even though if they sign on for it, I just wanna be realistic about what it looks like. And I didn't know if we could capture that in the job description. Yes, I think that's a little hard to tell right now because I think it will increase. You know, the main part of their job, I would assume, is to get the bills paid. You know, that's a time consuming, um, you know, issue. And that's where we're lacking here. The minutes of the meeting, I'm not sure if Mike wants to continue on, but maybe the minutes also. Okay. And they're asking the so it's mainly getting the bills paid. So uh, my, you know, vision would have been if we could get maybe a clerk from the school, that would be wonderful because they may be able to work out of your office because I think Scott will be a real asset to this clerk because she's just gonna do what we say and all of them, you know, the bills will have to be approved and whatnot. But if she has any questions, I think Scott probably will be able to help her along with that okay. or him. Um, as time, I, I'm really not sure. Um, we're going to meet once a month, but the bills are going to have to be paid. I don't know. We The city pays weekly, so mm -hmm. we could pay it. I don't know. We we only going to reimburse monthly or so whenever we're ready, but how we're going to pay them is probably weekly, right? Or how do you... Yeah, we'll bill monthly. I don't know. Oh, it's we'll monthly? We'll bill monthly, and, I, and the design teams will be bill monthly. Yeah. And then the, the people working on site and environmental issues that come up will we'll bill through the, um, the design team, most likely. And okay. so that will come with that monthly bill. Okay. Even when we get into construction. The It'll still be monthly? Well. So, okay. Okay. So there's part of your answer, Dr. Ware. I, I didn't even realize that. So it would be um, on a monthly basis. And when would that be? Do you know, if, is it usually at the beginning of the month, the end of the month? How does that work? Uh, we typically put our bills out at the end of the month. Uh, we'd have to be asking the selected design team to, to do the same. Um, and, and it's very flexible in that regard. If you want them on a certain date, we'll, we'll make things work well, for you. I was you. just thinking if we could put maybe in the job description, you know, the first week of the month is when the time is needed for this person. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Right. We'd be submitting our, our invoices at the end of the month. Uh, the expectation would be that they'd be paid in 30 days. Yep. That, you know, it's not like they'd be paid that week. It, yep. it, that's just normal course of business yep. for us. But it, everything it, takes it, a long it, time it, around it, here. So. Well, we have to approve all the bills, right? Uh, yes. We, well, the you design, have to you'd have, the committee? You'd, you'd, yeah. You'd, yeah. You'd have to uh, approve our bill first of all. Uh, we would, uh, when we, the designers send the bill, they send it to us, and we look it over, and then we stamp it as approved yep. or send it back. Um, so there's there's that set of eyes on the design team's bills, which covers again uh, not only their costs, their subconsultants' costs, but also uh, the subconsultants that are doing site work and environmental work. So we have the eyes on it first, then then we will send it to you, um, and we'll time that out so that goes at the end of the month with our invoice so you get them at the same. So it's not like somebody's working on ours the first week of the month and then the yeah. design team's the second, second or third week. Which will be good because we meet the second week. 
So if you're giving yeah. us the beginning of the month, we'll, we'll meet, and then it goes to the person to pay them. Right. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, to answer your question, districts do it differently. So it, it all depends on what everybody is comfortable with. So sometimes the invoices come to the full committee, and if, you know that's one of the agenda items on a full committee meeting. Or sometimes the full committee will designate maybe two or three people to be somewhat like a finance subcommittee, where mm -hmm. they're the ones who um, they can be – sent the invoices and doesn't have to go through the big meeting like this. Um, it all depends on what the committee is comfortable with. I would say with. our history is it comes to the full okay. meet, full board. Yeah. Um, that's how ours has been yeah, in the past. A, yeah, but it, it, like I said, it's, it's dependent on which committee and which district, what they're comfortable with. So. I, I will add to that that you know, what we're talking about now is for the next 24 months for the feasibility and schematic okay. design portion of work. Once, once um, that's approved and, and the and the project moves forward for the design team to be putting together construction documents. Uh, it'll be similar to that, but then once they go out to bid and the, the contractor or uh, construction manager starts on the project, that's when there's there's some larger bills than you know some serious issues about getting them paid on time and not letting them slip. Um, so it's, when would that start? We're probably well, that would be about three years from now, maybe maybe two and a half years from now, depending on how things play out on the project. So are we premature, you know, talking about this? If there's only a few bills, I, I yeah, think we could right handle it. Yeah, so Yours right, and ours and the design teams, and then that's it for now. That's really. it. For, that's yeah. it for now, and it'll probably stay fairly uh, similar to that for. Um, after the project gets approved and moves forward and and the architect has um has a supplemental service to be doing construction documents so dr ware maybe we are a little premature because i think mm -hmm. if it's only two or three bills you know i think we can all handle that and if mike is taking care of the minutes then um yeah then we're we only need it in a couple of years so yeah yeah okay that, oh, yeah. oh, when construction that's, starts, that's like Alan was saying, the invoices start to pick up. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, too, there's going to be change orders. And, yeah. and to have somebody who can quickly get, you know, all the signatures together and all that right. kind of stuff is super helpful for, you know, the project to move along smoothly. Okay. In the meantime. I mean, you know what your budget me. is. In the meantime, yep. um, we did get a bill at our um, office for the ad that was posted for the designer. Where, do, where should I send those bills? Again, that would go to the committee to pay, and we'll code them. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we'll be able to code it. So you, in pro okay. Pay, so I'll have um, our it. clerk reach out to the business office to make sure that it gets sent over to us. I guess, I'm not really so sure. I guess my is my, I got one suggestion. If there's information starting to come in, maybe we could create an email for this committee. So on, that on that bill, that was actually sent to the mayor's office as well, and we sent it to. Uh, Purchasing because purchasing is responsible for the advertising RFPs and a request for uh, okay. send it to purchasing to have them pay that bill. Uh, uh, and again, that is a reimbursable cost with the MSBA, so uh, it's not borne on the outside of this budget that the city has. Okay. Um, and and it's participated in by the MSBA. Right. So it. it it definitely would be one of three, uh, four codes. You know, the, the four codes that you have that right now for feasibility and schematic design, and and we can help you code that um, if you get us that that invoice. That's what uh, Tao Win from our office can be doing as a financial analyst for you. Yeah, it, that's it's, what I'm thinking. Maybe we could talk then. Sure. Um, yep. To set up the process, like if they're going to start getting bills or communications or something, we should probably have like an email that it's central to. You know, she, you, you have the ProPay system that you're working yep. within, and she has access to that ProPay okay. system. She can She cannot um, uh, make alterations to that. She can only, um, you know, visualize <laughs> it or, or read it. Um, but then she can, from that, tell you if it's code. Uh, she can tell you what the code should be to get everything into the right, you know, category. Yeah. So typically, the process. So our invoices will come from our accounting department, and it will go directly to the city. And, and we'll let you know what that propay code will be. And that, our, that propay code will stay the same throughout at least this phase. Um, and then it will change as we move into construction and all the other different phases or in, beyond this phase. If, and when we say go to the city, we, we'll send them to anybody. that uh, We can yeah. send them to uh, Carissa as a chair. We can send them to Mike as, uh, you know, you're so That's in, why I was saying maybe there should be some kind of central location right. where it all can go. 
And when we get a designer on board, typically the designer will send us the invoices first. Yes. And then we, we look through them, make sure they're accurate, and then we'll stamp them and we'll put the proper propay codes on them. Yep. And then we'll send them to whatever email you designate for us to send them to. <laughs> to learn a system with just a couple of things instead of bring them on when there's 20 bills all coming at once. So this is a, oh. So I, I think this would be a good training exercise if we actually started with someone as a clerk for the commission to start learning how to do this and slowly adjust to the process. I guess I'm in disagreement if there's only a couple though. There's only a couple it, of bills. There's only gonna be, you know, three bills. Well, I don't know. I think, do think? Uh, uh, again, if we could just work this out, you yeah, know, we can until talk it about starts it more. moving along, you know, uh, again, two or three bills or four bills, even that, that can, I think, be handled by the But I, I understand where Mike's coming from because it's a lot easier to learn on a few things rather than, oh my God, we got, you know, all these bills and here you go. And, yeah, and, but, and even to that point, it's going to be a few bills for the past, for the next two and a half years. If you brought somebody on, six months before we went into construction, they could have that six months in order to learn it and then, you know, move into construction and they'll be up to speed. We can, we can again, wait until, uh, you know, Dr. Ware and, you know, Mrs. Yeah, Leclam we can talk get, more about get it. To, get and collaborate and come up with, you know, a description, as you said, of, of the position and the responsibilities. And uh, I think then we can take it from there. Okay. But we still need a process now because it started. Mm -hmm. So, like, you folks, where you want them to send it. That's what they're saying. We need a process. So that's why I was just suggesting maybe a fairy school, you know, email, you know, thing that everything can go. I, I believe in our first couple months that we've been here, we've now sent out probably two invoices. And I think it, I have to look, but I believe they've been sent to Carissa's attention. Oh. Um, okay. And that to the chairperson of this committee. Okay. Yes, and then she sure. can funnel it to the appropriate. She's maybe wondering what to do with them. Yeah. <laughs> That's my point. Not, not pay them out of her own checking account. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, I can talk to Carissa about okay, how she Okay, could you do that? Be because, again, I just don't, you know, sure. I don't want to say let's direct it to, uh, you know. Yep, I'll talk to sure, Carissa to see what she thinks as well. Who should start handling it. But, again, when it gets complicated and there's a lot more, uh, and, again, there should be, some, you know, um, for time in, in terms of, you know, getting acclimated to the system, whoever is going to be, you know, at, on our end working with that. Uh, the, other thing, the other thing tonight that was brought up is should somebody, should there be a subcommittee of our uh, building commission in terms of when, the, you know, we have to approve or disapprove certain, you know, fi you know financial uh, bills that are coming in or that just, and should I can tell you it, just should it be the chairperson? So, so the subcommittee, it, it is a, it's an option. It's okay. something that typically is formed when we move into construction because then there's so, there's different levels of you know changes and, and yeah. potential change orders that come up, and sometimes you need to get a, a response right away, quicker than others. So it's it's easier to call two or three people together, maybe get them on a Zoom call and go through it and get approval. Um, so I think for now, it, I don't necessarily think we need a subcommittee at this okay. point. Okay. Um, I yeah. think the, the invoices probably can come to the full committee. There's only be two of them. It won't take much time. I think there's this wishful thinking on a lot of part, uh, members of this committee that oh, maybe that'll be next year, but we're talking about maybe a year and a half, two years down the road. Okay. Right. Correct. All right. All so right. that'll be on our agenda for the next yes. few okay. meetings. Let's talk about approving um, invoices. Okay. All right, the next item on our agenda this evening is Article 97, which is the Public Lands Preservation Act. Um, again, it's to inform individuals that uh, until the feasibility study is complete, okay, we, uh, you know, uh, really can't, we haven't decided, you know, is there gonna be a renovation, is there gonna be an expansion, or is it gonna be built on, you know, the public park? And, uh, past experiences, we have to, however, start looking at, uh, you know, actively pursuing and finding about, finding out uh, and, and maybe start the procedure for the Article 97. Am I correct, Mr. Minkus? 
Well, as far as, as far as the Article 97, I think it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg is that we don't want to start going heavily into schematic design and then find out that um, we have a roadblock that is, um, you know, keeping uh, the city from doing what it wants to do. And and the last I believe in my mind that it was left that we were getting that cleared to uh, legal from Chicopee as to that the city's on solid footing as far as moving forward with this rather than you know time out um let's hold up for uh till we get some more clarity on it um and if anybody disagrees with what i'm thinking uh, please speak up because that's just the way i was left with it, my understanding from what i've got from legal is that chigby has title to all the property it's all parkland so we need to get the dimensions and the request in to determine what we need to request from the state to do the swap in the Conservation Commission and the Park Commission. So everyone, I think, kind of understands the process that needs to know about it. We've contacted the legislators. We've contacted the Parks Commission. We've contacted the uh, Conservation Commission. It, they know it, it may show up, but until we have the details, we can't really submit a request. Understood. Okay. So you're right. It's kind of like a chicken in the egg. I well, problem. Yeah. <laughs> I think let's let's um, as first step, let's get the design team chosen and on board, and then make them part of the equation, um, so that they're uh, looking at options that um, for you know maybe two, three, four options that say, okay, we we're looking for this much land, and and it's in this corner of the the park land or what what have you, and then um, you know make a decision there when we we have a little bit more substance to this this uh this this issue yeah because at that point they'll have their surveyors on board with them and all that to, you know they can go out there and do all that informational gathering what we, what we want to make sure is that we the, the whole feasibility is a feasibility is a project feasible um and also is the concept that is feasible the desire of the city that they want to move forward on so that that process takes some time to to um, work itself out and have everybody understand it and always has and each one of those solutions has a different price tag to it. So, you know, there's always a sweet spot where everybody goes, that's the solution we want. And that's the price that uh, we we think that the, the taxpayers of the city, um, you know, would be uh, willing to, um, you know, uh, endorse. So I, I think there's a little bit of that. So but but first step, let's get. Uh, our designers put on board, and, and that will be happening, like I said, by November 5th. Can I, can I ask a quick clarifying question about the land, Mike? You had said <clears throat> it's all parkland. So regardless, <clears throat> excuse me, regardless of whether or not we decide to do a renovation or a rebuild, we have to find land to swap. Is that correct? Because the current land is not school land. That I don't, I didn't ask law about that. I, they built the school there. The school was built prior to Article 97 being put in place. So the understanding is that they probably did it legally or correctly at the time. So I don't know if that changes the designation of the land because there's a school there or not. It, it's just, it's kind of an open question, but we won't know the answer until we go forward to the, to uh, whatever the agency is at the state that does these determinations. And that happens uh, I know after that's we not figure much of an out the size. I, I think right. one of the times that's going to happen is uh, the first thing that the design team is going to do is get their surveyors in here and they're going to get you know, start doing a title search on it as to, okay, what has to happen to, you know, augment this in some form or fashion. So at least you'll have clarity on what the existing school is and, and who's who has title to it. I'm sure the city has title to it, of course, but it's just a matter of um, once you have the components in place, then, then the analysis can be done as to what next steps have to be taken to do swaps. Will that be a question for the design team? Um, you know, if they have experience with the Article 97? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Really that, that, yep. that, yeah, if, if they have no experience with them and somebody else does have experience with them, I think that's a strong point for a candidate. And that's something going into these interviews that obviously the city will have their own questions, but we can help develop some of those questions as well that we've seen from past projects. 
be any more comments about Article 97. Uh, next steps. Um, I think uh, one of the things is, okay, our next meeting, if I remember, is um, October 10th, Thursday. We said we're going to traditionally hold them on the second Thursday of every single month, so I'd just like to announce, again, it'll be on that particular day. If you look at the schedule that I handed out, the little red dots along the top on the calendar there are always uh, marked off as that second Thursday of the of the month. So if there's a you know a holiday or something that comes in there, we can adjust as okay. that goes along. Okay. All right. Is there any new business anybody would like to bring up? No, none. Okay, then I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. All right, second. Okay, a second uh, motion to adjourn. So this meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you. I have to take a roll call. Oh, roll call. Oh, roll call. Roll call. Uh, Doug Gerard. Yes. Dr. Ware. Yes. Frank Boron. Kate Lambert. Yes. Tanya Roman. Yes. Real Flam. Yes. Michael Sarnelli. Yes. Stephen Morno. Katie Collins Kalbaugh. Yes. And Kozakowski. Yes. This meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>